Entrance hymn number 219, number 219, Lift Up Your Hearts, verses 1 and 3. Beloved, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, beloved. Good morning, Father. Gathering together once again as God's family, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have, have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold on to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up. I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response to the psalm is... The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power, his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. His saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, 
let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Oh, alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, 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 alleluia. Oh, alle, 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 alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love you, and we will come to you. Alle, alle, alleluia, alle, alle, alleluia, oh, alle, alle, Alleluia, alle, 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 alleluia. Oh, alle, 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 alleluia. Alle. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I. Who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you this I command you love one another beloved the gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ My dear sisters, for those of you who are mothers, I say to you this morning, Happy Mother's Day. And I thank you for not saying same to you, Father, wherever you are. In the month of May, we honor our Blessed Mother. Therefore, it's also appropriate that in the month of May, we acknowledge those who are mothers. And so three points of prelude before we begin our three-point homily. The first point in the prelude. My dear mothers, because you said yes, just like our blessed mother said yes, we have been brought into life. You could have said no, but you didn't. Like our blessed mother, when motherhood came, motherhood began at conception, you said yes. And so because of your yes, my dear mothers, thank you. Thank you for bringing us into life. Thank you that your choice has called all of us to acknowledge that we are gifted with life. And because you have said yes, we journey through this life, always grateful for your yes. To you, my dear mothers, who are either tempted not to be a mother 
or who gave in to the pressure and stopped that gift of motherhood for whatever reason to you I say remember Mary's yes didn't just bring Jesus the Savior into the world Mary's yes brought the great healer into the world you are not the only mother who may have been tempted not to bring life into the world you're not the only mother who may have said no to bring life into the world but you are someone that the great healer is standing beside right here right now and whatever it is that sears the conscience disturbs the mind or the heart ask the Lord right now on this wonderful gift of Mother's Day to bring about a new healing a new sense of comfort a new courage to carry on we are more than our temptations we are more than our failings that's why Jesus came for in the midst of our darkness the light has come to bring us out of the tomb of any mourning of any guilt of any seared conscience to bring us back into his own marvelous light and finally to you my dear mothers if you are gifted to be part of the mystery of having to bury your child no parent should bury a child but if you are part of that mystery of having to bury your child or to you like me who had to bury our mothers don't forget the season we are in this is the season of Easter it's the season of celebrating Jesus raised from the dead and so whether it be the mother who has committed a child to the earth or whether it be a child who has committed our mothers to the earth we have joy my joy is going to be complete in you says the Lord because I have conquered death and so even though we mourn and even though the pain is still real <clears throat> the Lord is with us and so we celebrate today all the gifts of love and the gifts of healing the gift of grace that we have in Jesus Christ now for our three-point reflection Jesus says I no longer call you strangers I call you friends using the word pal as a friend we can use the word pal to guide our reflection this morning first the letter P my dear mothers my dear fathers if you are with the mothers now we'll talk about you in June but right now just listen help her to listen and over the course of the month remind her <laughs> of what is shared this morning and that goes for you too my dear children if you're sitting beside your mothers Mary is considered to be the perfect mother she was born perfect because God chose it that way and she brought the Son of God the Savior of the world into the world and this Mary we learn from Scripture did something beautiful right throughout her journey of life here comes the P any experience Mary had Mary pondered in her heart and in her mind but she didn't just ponder the experiences of life she pondered them in the light of scripture and so when the angel came of course she was terrified and mystified but when she was told that she was chosen to be the mother of Jesus and she could have said no she said yes why because she could ponder that moment and remember scripture scripture foretold that the Messiah would come and it's a humbling thought that she was going to be the mother of this Messiah she could easily have become bitter because the experience changed her course of life and direction that she wanted to go but because Mary pondered these things in her mind and in her heart in light of the scriptures she was able to bring about a source of joy into the world even as she struggled with the many questions in her life my dear mothers my first question to you do you ponder every experience in life in light of the scriptures 
You see, we will all have different experiences. Some will be joyful. Some will be very sad. Some, we will wonder, where is God in all of this? But like Mary, every mother is called to ponder your experiences in light of scripture. Why? So that you can learn how to grow in love with God, with yourself, and with the many people that God has placed in your life. But here's something even more significant. As Mary pondered her experiences in light of scripture, as a mother, she would have shared her faith and her experiences with Jesus. And this is where you come in, my dear mothers. Every mother and your motherhood started when that gift of conception was made. Every mother is called by God to ponder your experiences in light of scripture and share these with your children. Jesus could learn how to listen to his father because Mary was that channel that helped him to listen by pondering his experiences in light of scripture. And so every mother has a duty to pass on to your children. And when I say children, I don't just mean infants. Even the big, as we say in Jamaica, grayback man and woman. Every single child that you have been gifted by God as a blessing, every child expects from you that direction of hearing as a mother, I use the gift of prayer to bring my experiences in light of scripture to learn how to grow in love. You see, my dear mothers, you're the first teacher and you have been given the gift of motherhood to guide your children in the ways of God. You will do your best. Sometimes the children will respond, sometimes they won't. But your part must be, I am reflecting, I am pondering these experiences in light of scripture for no other purpose than to allow me, as a mother, to grow in love with God so that I can share these experiences with my children who hopefully will imitate what I do. As a mother then, who is called to ponder experiences in light of scripture to grow in love, every mother comes to acknowledge that there is a certain moment of strength and a certain moment of weakness. Jesus says, I command you, love one another. Every mother must ponder, do I truly love God or do I, have it in reverse, prefer to love the things of God? Do I prefer to love the blessings of God, which are good, or have I learned how to truly love God with all that I am? Do I learn how to love the God who has empowered me to work? Or do I love the works that I do which make me feel good and somehow miss the boat of loving God, the God of the works, as I should? Because here is a reality of the situation. Your son, your daughter, your children will see right through you. They will say to you, Mommy, you love God? And you will answer, of course I do. And they may say to you, so mommy, if you love God, why do you say those words? Mommy, if you love God, why are you doing these things? Every mother is called by God to affirm love for God, evidence in words and works. Because when you don't do that, my dear sisters, your children will see it for what it is. And you, my dear mothers, will either affirm your love for God by the words and works that you do, or either confuse your children or let them realize that God is not seriously taken the way he should. Every child wants to see God. And you, my dear mother, you are called to be the first face of God for your child or children. And therefore your child is looking on you. Your child is learning from you. And every mother then, the A, must align love for God with the words 
and actions that reveal a loving, merciful God in life. As the children learn from you, let them see that alignment between love for God and all that you say and do. And there's anything else one can ponder this morning as mothers. It is this. Jesus from the cross as he was dying looked down and he saw his mother helpless, in pain, and there was nothing she could do. Many of us are in pain this morning. On this Mother's Day, some of us have had to bury our mothers. I'm just coming out of a, a burial of my uncle, and that too was painful. And what was even more painful about this recent burial of my uncle Ward was that at funerals, you naturally want to comfort each other. You want to put your hand on someone. You want to put your arm around someone. You sometimes want to hug. But because of the coronavirus pandemic, I had to willfully remind myself, keep your hands down. Yes, I did make a few acts of love <laughs> that went against keeping your hands down. It, it had to be done. And by being at the graveside, I could fully appreciate Mary's powerlessness. She journeyed with her son. She watched him condemned. She watched him beaten. She watched him crowned. She watched him carry his cross and fall three times. She watched him crucified on the cross. Which mother does not hear her child screaming in pain, does not automatically rush forward to give comfort and love and hug and support? And Mary had to be at that distance. And all she could do was yield to the pain of the sword piercing her heart as she watched her only son die slowly on the cross. But this Jesus who was dying was not going to abandon his mother. And so he said to his mother, when he saw John, the beloved disciple, standing beside her, woman, behold your son. What does that mean for mothers? Jesus didn't just come to save Mary and Joseph. Jesus didn't just come to save the 12 apostles, the 12 tribes of Israel, or just the nation living in the vicinity of Jerusalem. Jesus' love propelled him to save the entire world. As Jesus gave John to Mary, every mother is called to recognize that as you show love to your immediate children and family, guess what? You, my dear mothers, share in the motherhood of Mary. You are now invited to show that same love and care and concern for all God's beloved disciples. These beloved disciples are everyone that God sends into your life as a mother. Every mother must remember that anyone who comes into your presence is someone's child. Primarily, it is God's child. And so every mother, you are one, is invited to be that face of God for every individual who comes into your circle of life. When we learn how to do that, that is when you begin to truly imitate the virtues of Mary, our blessed mother. She said yes and became the mother of Jesus. The church is represented as a mystical body of Christ. Therefore, all members who belong to the church belong to this mystical body, beloved disciples. And Jesus says to his blessed mother, behold the disciples. Behold your children. And you who are mothers, Jesus now says to each of you, anyone I send into your life, behold your son. Behold your daughter. You see, beloved, God knows that we have to learn how to grow in love. Left to our own devices, we will practice selfish love, absorbed love, that which only satisfies me. But how does God help us to grow in love? He first of all commands us, I command you, love. Love one another as I love you. Not the way you selfishly desire. Love one another the way I love you. So much so that I lay down my life for your benefit. And as Jesus invites every mother to think and ponder these experiences based on that scripture, Jesus says, I will give you what you need to learn how to move from living and loving because I commanded you 
to moving to a higher realm, loving not because I'm commanded, but because this is what God truly desires. When we move into that realm of growth in spirituality and love, it is then, beloved, that you and I will truly become sons and daughters in whom God is well pleased. It is then that we will prove ourselves to be his children, to be our blessed mother's children. And you, my dear mothers, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for the sacrifices you make. Never fail to show us the face of a loving God. To him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. As a people first loved by God, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father God Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. God the Almighty Father raised Jesus as the firstborn from the dead and made him our Savior. Let us call upon him, saying, Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. All Holy Father, you brought your beloved Son, Jesus, from the darkness of death into the splendor of your glory. Bring us also into your marvelous light, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. You have given us faith to save us. May we live today by the faith of our baptism, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. You command us to seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at your right hand. Do not let us be deceived by the allurements of sin, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. May our life, hidden with Christ in you, our Father, shine before the world. Foreshadowing a new heaven and a new earth, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. And on this Mother's Day, we pray for all mothers. May they choose always to listen to your voice, to ponder everything in their lives under the guidance of Scripture and the Spirit, and to be real instruments of love in this world. For all mothers, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. As we continue our journey through this month of May, honoring our Blessed Mother, may the rosary that we pray as a family, as a global church, find favor with you, so that when you are ready, you will put an end to the coronavirus pandemic. For this we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. For all those who are sick, May you help them to recover. For all those who mourn the loss of loved ones, 
may you be our comfort, strength, and shield. And for all those who have died, especially those of our family, those we know, those who asked our prayers, may you welcome them into your kingdom. For this we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. And now, beloved, in the silence of our hearts, let us offer our own personal petitions. For the intentions in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Give us, Lord, the glory of your Son. Let us pray. Loving Father, pour your Spirit upon us so that as we bear the fruit of love, those who taste it will see the real difference, the real joy you make in our lives. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in your divinity, to humble yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, beloved, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, O our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna! Bless 
said is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Hosanna! Hosanna! You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, Jesus opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Kenneth our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote ourselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Remember all our mothers whom you have called back to yourself. 
Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace of Christ. Peace virtual of Christ. hugs. Lots peace more virtual peace. hugs. Lamb, Lamb of, God. of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. I now invite you to do your act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Love one another as I love you. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. See you next week. Our recessional hymn, Isn't the Love of Jesus Simply Wonderful?
Isn't the love of Jesus simply wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't the love of Jesus simply wonderful? Praise His holy name. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. Praise His holy name. Oh, isn't the love of Jesus simply?